Houston, we have a problem. So, if you've seen the video, which you kind of haven't because my computer's having a seizure, apparently, because the next video that's coming out is 4K, and it's, I think it's about uh, over an hour long. So if you're interested in watching that video, might have some information that's good. Some of it's phone call, some of it's working on a little bit of the big rock. Most of it's phone call between A-Main and Horizon Hobby. So anyways, uh, what we're going to work on today, you can see right across the board right here, we've got the RC Guy Garage Soldering Station. Two things are on it. <laughs> One thing doesn't belong. This. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like I need to work on the uh, thing there. But this right here. So I had done a video on this, and there is an issue, I believe, with the front bearing. Now, it's either the front bearing, or it's the shaft. On the X-Max Traxxas trash bag that I've got, pinion slipped off, and then ended up discovering that my motor shaft itself was wiped out. And, yeah, and that's when my whole issue with Traxxas kind of came about because that truck was brand new. Brand new truck, first battery pack, or second battery pack, whatever it was. I think it was the second battery pack. Pinion came off, and I noticed a huge amount of motor slop. And I think that's where some people are coming across motor issues. And what's crazy is the noise that this motor right here is branded Spectrum slash Horizon Hobby made in China. It's exhibiting the same sounding issues as that Traxxas motor. So, does that mean that Traxxas is getting their motors from the same place that Horizon is? Man, now, that's a conundrum right there. Whatever a conundrum is. So anyways, if you're interested in watching this episode from RC Guy Garage, you can see we've got the GoPro set up on a tripod right here. And we're going to be filming... The RC Guy Garage Soldering Station. Hey, uh, hey GoPro. Uh, GoPro. I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I'm a, usually big a big proponent for you guys and your cameras, 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 but I've got a whole bunch of these 7s, and your, and your app, app that you just, that you updated, just updated, updated without my, updated without my authorization, authorization just destroyed, just destroyed how, I how I use your GoPro. 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 Thanks. Thanks. So this is what I'm trying to show you. Every other time I've been on 1080... 30 frames per second, and I've been able to f uh, frame the shot. Now, I can't even see it. I know you're probably not understanding this, but check it out. This is what I'm talking about. Black screen. GoPro, you pissed me off because you guys just ruined how I use this. Can't even use it now. This is pointless, having it like that. All right, so anyways, uh, enough of me complaining. Why are we here today? We're here with the RC Guy Garage Soldering Station. These things are available for uh, 500 bucks. But we've got the um, we got the Spectrum Firma 3200 kV motor out of the Big Rock, which is the SPMXS M2000, and it's from Horizon Hobby. What I want to do right now is I want to pull this thing apart to figure out what really failed in this. Are we talking about a motor shaft issue? Are we talking about a bearing issue? Or now is it a combination of the both? So, pretty sure you can hear that. It literally sounds exactly like what happened with my X-Max motor. So that kind of comes into, uh, are these companies getting these things from the same manufacturer? And obviously just, obviously just rebranding things because it's paint and black motor and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright, so we're going to pull this thing apart. Uh, I've got a couple of drivers. I'm not sure what I'm at. 2.5 or two, and then I think these are 1.5s. Uh, what I am gonna do first, uh, this does have that uh, little D style or safe D uh, uh, little C clip or E clip retainer pin. I'm not sure if that's a C clip or an E clip. It might be an E clip. I'm gonna pop that off. I'm gonna heat up this screw right here because that's probably Loctited, and I'm just gonna Blast a touch of heat on all three of these screws real quick with my burns o -matic. Um Just to hopefully, you know, release like those screws. And because these fasteners are so small, I just don't want them stripping out. 
And I hate the fact, I literally hate the fact I can't see. So, <laughs> it's ticking me off, man. Okay. So, I'm going to heat that up first, or am I going to pop out the thing first? Maybe I'll pop, pop out the, the little uh, thing here. So, the way I do it, uh, especially on this safety thing, safety, uh, I, I'll put a set of pliers on it, and I'm going to give it a rotate. So, some of this you might not be able to see, but I rotate it. So that it starts to get the, see how it makes it so you can actually grab a hold of the uh, clip. So hopefully that's going to work. Got to be careful because these do have a tendency to go flying. So hopefully that's going to do it. So I'm going to carefully... Try to pry that off. There we go. So that way you can pull the little E-clip off. I am going to touch that with some heat right now. Not too long. Just long enough to uh, hopefully get this removed. There we go. Yep. Hey, look at that. Sweet. Careful because that pinion is going to be hot. Motor shaft itself has a little bit of heat, but it wasn't that bad. Now I'm just going to touch these three screws. Oh, you know what I should do, man? <laughs> um, I'm not going to get my I'm not going to get my caliper out. <laughs> I mean, not my caliper. I'm not going to get my uh, I'm not going to get my gauge out. But hopefully, you can see how much that's moving man I almost think that's I can't I actually can't tell because you have to look inside of there to see that's a lot and that's the noise that I was hearing uh, there was a funky noise that I started to hear with mine that just hear that it just wasn't a normal gear like mesh sound it was just it just sounded bad. See, I was probably out of frame on all of that. Thank you, GoPro. Ticking people off. By ruining stuff they don't even need to touch. I'm gonna turn the flame down. I'm just gonna touch these real quick. Touch that one. Touch that one. Touch that one. Now, if there's any thread lock on there, oops, if there's any thread lock on there that should have helped release, ah, uh, that came, that's nice and easy. I wonder if there's even any thread lock on there. Just careful pulling these screws out because if this is a motor, or if this is a scenario where you're ever gonna reuse stuff, you just want to make sure you don't strip these things out. Man, I got to tell you, sometimes 4K footage isn't worth it. I got a computer right now. My Mac has been struggling on 4K. So now I usually just take my like fingernail or whatever, and you'll see <laughs> it's coming apart pretty easy. So there's a back cover right here, which should house a bearing. So there's a bearing right there. You can see that. See if I can pop that out. It might be kind of a pain. That bearing. Don't know. Maybe I'll pop that out. There are ways to get this out. Um, basically, what you do is you compress something inside the hole. And it will push the bearing out. And it looks like that I may have to heat this surface and maybe get the bearing out that way. But honestly, that bearing actually feels fine. Now, next is actually getting the uh, rotor out, uh, center section out, and just give it a push. There are two shims. 
One's an actual shim, and the other one is a convex or concave style washer. Pop that out. And then this magnet's pretty strong, so while you're pushing out on this part, you're going to want to grab a hold of that. <laughs> you're going to want to grab a hold of this part and rip it out. Mode, the magnets are extremely strong. So what I can see right away is that has got some that has got some marks on it so what I wanted to check and this is something I checked with the X max this shaft should be the same width from here all the way through what I want to check is I want to check to see if the tolerance here is going to be the same at this end oops <laughs> be careful with that magnet man it is pretty strong so this is just a inexpensive digital caliper that I use I'm just going to check this back side first make sure that's zeroed out I'm going to check the back side Coming in at five millimeters. I'm gonna check this front side where it's not riding on the bearing. Coming in at five. Boat. Now I'm gonna check where the bearing rides. So it is pretty close it is a little worn down and that's to be expected it seems like the front half of the shaft is smaller look at that not by much but that could definitely make a difference oh no actually wait a minute Uh, it's about the same. So, what that says, that says bearing issue. Be careful with these. Don't place them down. We can get metal shards anywhere. <laughs> like I just did. So, inside. Where's my light? Be right back. All right, so I don't know how well this is going to show up, but right inside of there, let's see if I can get the light in there. If I could hold it. It's difficult. How about if I do this? There we go. This is more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Because the camera's in the way. <laughs> the camera's in the way. But I think you can see inside there's rust forming on the magnets. I mean, not on the magnets. There's actually rust forming inside of there. Dang camera. And the bearing has got a funkiness to it. You see that? So I'm going to pop that bearing out and get a look at it. So what you do is you just use a driver. And you can punch down and in. Hopefully I've got a driver that's small enough to get in there. I might have to use like a socket or something but you got to get something that's basically the size of that and I'm going to very lightly tap on the bearing this is the wrong side to be tapping on 
I'm, you know, I'm telling you, don't buy these drivers. These things are junk. Those things are tickle me off. <laughs> All right, let's try something else. Maybe an Allen wrench. You get an Allen wrench big enough? Ah, there we go. Get an Allen wrench. Give a couple taps. Or not. Should be able to tap that bearing out. But it is not wanting to tap out, man. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's on the inside, too. Dang it. Now that's not the right, oh, look at that. Would you just look at it? Look at all that junk that just came out of there. Look at that, man. I don't know what that is, but that is a whole pile of junk that just came out of that section. I'm going to clean up this bearing real quick. Just to see how this bearing rides um, on the shaft. I just want to clean up all this stuff that's on here. I don't know if that's metal or what that is. It could be dirt. Whatever it is, it's dry. So the bearing itself is, feels kind of almost seized. I want to see if that stuff that came out is magnetic. Check that out. Everything that just came out of that motor is magnetic. So what? Whatever that is, that's inside that motor, is all magnetic. I wonder if the bearing basically puked its guts out. The bearing on the front side, I believe it looks like it's a bigger bearing. But that's not going to mean anything. Yeah. Backside bearing is a smaller bearing. Front side bearing is a bigger bearing. That's because the front side bearing is normally what supports more of the torque and load than the tail or tail shaft. I'm trying to tell. Yeah, I think the I think the the bearing self destructed. I think I can't tell, man. So all this junk right here, that is that is magnetic material that came out of that motor. So I'm gonna clean this out. Let's see what this looks like. <sighs> see inside on that surface, there's junk in there. Right where the bearing rides. So I need to get something in there. So this is what I usually do. So I'll poke like a paper towel in there and give it a couple spins. <sighs> looks a little bit better, but it looks like there's something in there. Oh. Whatever's in there. It's not going anywhere. <sighs> so whatever it was, there was uh, some kind of metal shavings and stuff in there, or whatever that is. That could be literally the bearing material uh, self-destructing. 
this bearing itself seems fine. This bearing it seems seized. So I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a shaft that I can put this on so I can give it a spin. I suppose I could put it on this shaft. Yeah, look at that. The bearing is wasted. So that's the internal parts of that bearing are wasted. So it seems like the tolerance for the bearing itself is junk, but there you go. So all that black material was the bearing. That front bearing is junk. So there you go. Front bearing is, whoa, <laughs> front bearing is junk. Just gotta make sure I keep this away from the other stuff. I'm just gonna reinstall everything because um, I don't know if they're gonna want this back. Uh, if they, let's just say you didn't have a warranty and you wanted to know potentially what size bearing this is. You got a 16 by five by the shaft is gonna be five. So 16 by five by five is the bearing that you need to replace. Let's just say that you know you didn't get a warranty uh, the front bearing, at least on this particular motor, which is the Spectrum Firma 3200 KV SPMX SM2000 from Horizon Hobby. So if you need a front bearing, that's what you need. So just confirm bearing is toast. So and that's why I do like these little videos. You do these little videos just to kind of like I love the teardown process. I always have. I liked, I like that sense of being able to figure out what was wrong and then just basically square it away. So anyways, if you like episodes like this from RC Guy Garage, you point blank already know what to do. So like I always say, just get out there and rip it or just get out and do something. Keep active, keep happy, share the hobby and just, yeah, I'm not good at talking like that. I probably should have shown putting it back together, but I guess I wasn't thinking. So it's it's all back together. What I would recommend is get one of these uh, burns o -matics. Best way to do this, obviously, because this front bearing is kind of like, I almost want to say it's not a drop-in. It's almost like a press fit. So what I did is I just heated up this front section really quickly, which allowed me... Um, yeah, it basically just allowed me to be able to press in the bearing. You want to make sure that you use, I use, I usually use sockets uh, and this particular exact socket right here, which is a 10 millimeter Craftsman has the exact size uh, section here that you want to apply pressure on the bearing because like I was showing, You don't want to apply pressure on the inside. You really want to apply pressure on the outside. And you also don't want to exceed the outside portion of the bearing itself. Because if it seats down past, if it seats down into that cavity past that little, like, let's call it, you could almost create like a flange. So if you were pounding on that thing and the bearing wasn't setting, it was because you were potentially hitting the outer surface and if the bearing kind of does like get in there it would almost mushroom over and not the bearing but the aluminum so i i probably should have like left that in there i probably should have like recorded but i wasn't thinking so yeah heat heat can definitely be your friend also the other thing to do is to take that bearing and put it in the freezer if you have a tight fit bearing or a tight fit something put it in the freezer then maybe you won't even have to heat it up. You got to be careful with heat.
You don't want to apply too much heat. They're bonus. I don't know. Bonus footage. I'm out. You should get out too and just rip something. Hey, uh, hey uh, GoPro. GoPro. I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I'm usually a, big a big proponent for you guys and your cameras, 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 but I've got a whole bunch of these 7s, and, and your app, app that you just you updated just without my without authorization, authorization just destroyed how I use your GoPro. Thanks. Why am I using a heat gun on my this truck? This guy.